Our poster is on astrocyte neuron interaction through the extracellular ionic composition. And this work is with Greg Handy and Ala Boris Young. So we're interested in how astrocytes modulate the synaptic signal between nearby neurons. We explore one pathway of astrocyte neuron interaction, how an astrocyte alters the extracellular concentration of different ion species through intracellular calcium transients. We present a model of the astrocyte that includes biologically constrained key transmembrane fluxes. Each of these components is carefully adapted from the literature to match the available data. And we take our model and we simulate it in three conditions. One with elevated external potassium in some sort of pathological seizure condition. Another with elevated potassium, but with the internal calcium transient through that IP3 mediated calcium influx. And another at resting external potassium levels. And what we find is that elevated extracellular potassium is returned to resting levels by the astrocyte through a combination of inward rectifying potassium channels and sodium potassium pumps. So in blue and pink here, we see that the astrocyte is clearing that elevated potassium and returning it to the baseline in green. And there's not much of a difference uh, between the two conditions, calcium and no calcium transient. However, there is a difference in the sodium dynamics between the simulations with and without this calcium transient. With the calcium transient in pink, we see a sharp decrease in external sodium. This difference is caused directly by the internal calcium transient, which causes an influx of sodium into the ash site through the sodium calcium exchanger. And what we find is that these changes in external sodium and potassium alter their corresponding reversal potentials for a nearby neuron. Here we show the firing frequencies of a nearby wing buzaki neuron stimulated by a step current at various sodium potassium reversal potentials. So down here in green, this is the resting sodium potassium levels. We see that the uh, wing buzaki neuron fires at its baseline frequency when it's stimulated. Okay, and then up here at elevated potassium levels in red, the wing buzaki neuron when stimulated will fire at a higher frequency than baseline. Okay, and so then depending on the pathway through the space that an astrocyte's modulatory effects take, the neuron's firing pattern will change. With no calcium transient in cyan, the astrocyte effects take the reversal potentials through this pathway, and the neuron will fire with different frequencies at different st stimulus timings along this curve. With the calcium transient in pink, the astrocyte effects uh, are taken down this modulatory pathway, and the neuron might not fire at all if it's stimulated at a particular time in this pathway at which the sodium reversal is pretty low. Okay, so in this proof of concept simulation, we find that astrocytes can modulate the activity of nearby neurons and produce different firing patterns depending on the timing of the stimulus and the timing of the astrocytes modulatory effects.